Welcome to the IT Fundamentals Training Series. I'm your host, Mark Halp. This is episode 25. We hit 25 big ones. And here we are working on the ITF Fundamentals. And we're going to talk about printers today and how to get that digital information from inside the computer out on a piece of paper. Who needs paper these days? Welcome to episode 25 of the IT Fundamentals Training Series. It is a big 2-5. You know, it's not that that often that podcasts hit 25, but here we are. We're at 25. So we're going to be looking at pages 105 onward into page 109-ish, 110 um, here today as we talk about printers. Now, it's a little odd that we might talk about getting digital information outside of the computer and putting it on the old-fashioned paper. Believe it or not, paper is still an issue. Printing is still an issue. And there are quite a few folks that still print. Now, reality is, is people print probably too often, uh, if you want my honest opinion about it. But re but uh, we still need to have those peripherals, those printers available for various reasons. I know that, you know, I've tried to sign uh, documents electronically for financial institutions, and they still require what they call a wet signature whenever it's printed on a piece of paper, and the ink itself is the wetness. So the ink is placed on there, and then we can scan it back in and redigitize it. So a lot of steps to make that happen versus a digital copy or a digital signature that might happen. But there are still requirements for that. So let's talk about printers um, and a lot of this is going to be talking about historically uh, what printers do. So page 105 is where we talk start talking about printers. And printers are peripherals. Now, the book says that they're electromechanical output devices that are used to put information from the computer onto paper. That's the official the official definition of what printers are. Certainly, that is, that is the case. And that's what you need to remember for the testing purposes. But let's just dumb that down or you do what I do in general. And let's say, look at it from a common sense perspective. Dumb it down is probably the wrong word. Let's just look at it from the common sense perspective. Printer take data that's inside of the computer, whether it's in a database, whether it's on a Word document, a, a word processing type of document, whatever it may be, and they transfer that and translate that to a piece of paper. That can be done through different types of printers. And that's where we look and start looking at printer technologies. Now, inkjet printers are exactly as it, they're advertising, inkjet, meaning they have ink, wet ink that's inside of there that the, the print heads will simply write that ink onto a piece of paper, all right? These were formerly called bubble jets, and, and that's kind of a uh, a brand name, if you will, used by Canon um, and, and different types of things. But bottom line, ink jets, they have wet ink inside of a cartridge that's placed inside of the printer that when the data comes into the printer, it's translated from that electronic format onto the paper with a print head that's on the uh, on the ink cartridge. So you'll if, if you flipped one of those upside down, typically what you'll see is like a, a copper um, kind of uh, card or interface that's on that that uh, ink cartridge. And and if if you're not seeing it when you flip yours upside down, I guarantee you down on the uh, the shuttle, if you will, that the ink cartridge sits into. There is that copper connection in there that translates the data from the computer, from the, the, the electronic format into what is printed on the paper. So the ink, ink, ink jets and, and those types um, of devices, they're simple devices. You can go to Walmart and buy one. They're, I, I call them throwaway devices anymore. You can go buy one for $20, $30, even $40, especially the time of year when school starts, when colleges and universities start, um, there is a, a sale on, if you will, um, in on those types of things. So all of these inkjets, they have cartridges for different colors. So they literally do what we call air gapping. And that meaning that there is no mixing uh, inside of the, the cartridge. Even if your cartridge comes and it has like three colors or four colors on it, inside of there, there are 
uh, kind of compartments, if you will, where the different colors go in. So they're, they're not um, they're not mixing for obvious reasons. You can't mix the colors and and get the true color you want. Typically, these cartridges are going to be black and then some form of of uh, primary colors like a, a red, yellow and blue. And then the computer, the computer functions inside of the inkjet will mix the colors once they get on the page. And typically what happens in that case is one color will be printed on there. Let's say you want to get a purple. Um, and so you would print a red or you would print a blue and then you would print the other color on top of it to mix them up in varying shades. And, and that's how you get these different colors. Um, typically the, uh, the the print color or print cartridge for the black is going to be separate from any other combined cartridges because you're going to go through black much faster than you're going to go through a color type of thing. Now keep in mind with all these printers, you can go into the settings on the driver themselves and make uh, choices on how you print as well. So you might want to print to grayscale instead of black. That uses less black ink. You want to might want to print black and white instead of color, except for when you actually need the color, because that reduces the amount of color ink. Otherwise, it is going to print exactly like you see it on the screen. And I guarantee you that you do not want to pay for color cartridges as frequently as you would pay for the black cartridges. These cartridges are running sometimes as expensive or more expensive than the printers themselves. That's where the companies are making their money. They, they, they use the printer themselves because it's throwaway as a loss leader. If you never heard that term, that means that they're going to sell it pretty much at cost or maybe even below cost because they know that the upkeep on it, what they what they need in order to upkeep that printer is actually going to cost you more money long term. Uh, and if they can lock you in in the in the cloud industry, we call that vendor lock. If they can lock you in to buying their cartridges and their uh, other pieces that go with that printer from time to time, they know that they're going to continually make money on you over time. So these uh, these black cartridges are typically separated from the color cartridges. The black cartridges are called exactly that, black cartridges, but the, the color cartridges are sometimes called CMY uh, or even CMYK, the K being the black, and that stands for Sienna, Magenta, Yellow, and Black cartridges. So CMY is the Sienna, Magenta, Yellow, and the K being the black. So sometimes they do come as four color uh, four cartridges. Sometimes they come as two cartridges, the black plus. I very rarely have seen them, the CMYKs, as a single cartridge. Figure 2.4 shows you what some of these cartridges look like. The cartridges are usually kind of a rectangle deal. You slide them in and pop them into place. They lock in. And then you can see on 2.4, that little gray ribbon that's coming off the left-hand side of that, that's where the data comes into the cartridge shuttle or cartridge holder that then translates the exact amount of ink and the placement of that ink when it comes out of uh, onto the paper. All right. The next kind of printer we want to took out, take a look at is a laser printer, which is, as the book says, is much like a photocopier. Um, in this particular case, um, you're not necessarily using cartridges with CMYK like uh, we just talked about, and the ink is dry rather than a liquid like in the inkjet. So on a laser printer, the, the ink is more of a powder that sits inside of a cartridge rather than a, or, or a drum. They call them drums instead of cartridges on the, on the laser printers or the photocopiers. And uh, and it's like I said, it's a dry powder. The stuff can be nasty as all get out if you break it open, drop it, whatever, as you're making changes. Whereas the ink jets are fully contained. If you keep your finger away from the nozzle at the end of the cartridge, you probably are not going to have any problems. And they're usually pretty thick plastic, so they don't break if you drop them. But these drums on the inkjet, or I'm sorry, on the laser printers, you drop that and you're going to have powder all over the place. And then when you go and clean it up, you take a broom to try and clean it up and you smear it all over the place. You really need to get some sort of water-based cleanup. And even that it's like, um, you know what it, it it's kind of like if you took a bunch of charcoal 
uh, that's yet to be burned. So you take a, a piece of black charcoal and you grind it up or, or black chalk and you grind it up and then into a fine powder and try and deal with that um, all over the place. Laser printers tend to run much more expensive than inkjets. So they're a lot less um, a lot, lot less of them are around, but the reality is, is that inkjets are good for home use, whereas laser printers are good for larger consumption type of models, like in a small, small, medium business, or even in a large business, if a small team inside of that large business is sharing that. All right. So uh, once you have these types of printers, now you have to talk about connection of the printers. Most printers today, whether they're home-based or office-based, have Wi-Fi capability inside them. So they're connected to a Wi-Fi router or a Wi-Fi signal that allows you to simply print from a any type of device using an onboard already built-in driver. Another way to do that is, is network connected through an RJ45 Cat5e network cable that runs from the printer to the switch. Um, so depending on um, the complexity of your network, you might, or even the security on your network, you might want to run that wired type of environment instead. Older printers were connected, and you'll see this on the bottom of page 107, were connected with what they call serial cables. A serial cable is a cable that is usually a nine pin or 25 pin, what we call DB9 or DB25 or DE9. Um, they're smaller versions of what you might think we talked about earlier, the VGA cables. Um, they're, they're those kinds of scenarios. You can also connect your, uh, your computer with USB uh, connections these days. And then again, um, parallel connections. There's a figure 2.42. Parallel cables and serial cables are very similar to one another, just have a different size connection at the end. Um, your parallel cable uh, has a, typically a DB25, and that's what you see in the figure 242 is that larger uh, DB25. In other words, 25 pin connection that's in there. We don't need to get into the details of why one's DB9 versus one uh, or DE9, a nine pin connection versus a 25. The bottom line is it's more... More data can be transferred, more types of data, more granularity of data can be transferred down. But most of these, if you're going to direct connect your printer to your computer these days, is either done via the network or USB. And that's the uh, that's the important piece that you need to understand. All right. Um, and then, you know, you you can also connect them through Wi-Fi. And, and that's that's a network connect connection. Uh, very similar. All right. Now, if we moved on from page uh, page 113, for example, there is uh, an item in here that you need to take a look at because a lot of people are using web-based printers these days and that you would connect that through the Wi-Fi. Um, and what you would do is you go to a web page, upload your document into the web page, and then from there you can go and release it on the printer. These are typically used in uh, commercial settings or in settings where the... Uh, the, the printer is being used like in a library by multiple people that may or may not have proper authentication on there, or maybe a, maybe a pay for print or pay to play or pay to print type of scenario. So these web services govern, you know, who, who uh, delivers the, the print job when it's released to the printer and so on and so forth. So that's what you need to know about, um, about that aspect of the, uh, of the printers. All right, so this is getting close to wrapping up chapter two. This is episode 25. Episode 26, we're going to do review questions and the chapter two exam essentials. So if you want to take a look at that, take your chapter two test and see where you're at. Um, just like our last time, we'll go over a few of the questions that I find that are important and relevant to the testing. But please let me know what you need to know. Where you know, if you take this test and you're only getting uh, eight out of ten, or or sixteen out of twenty, or seventeen, eighteen out of twenty, let me know which ones you didn't get right, so that we can talk through those and we can use that as an opportunity to help you learn that. 
uh, what what you're missing there and fill in that gap. So once again, you can connect with me at mhaupt at commonsensesecurity.net. Send me an email there or look me up on LinkedIn. You could even send me a message on LinkedIn. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Episode 25 is in the books. Now let's go for 50. We'll talk to you later. Thanks.